So up until now, we've only used Mechanim to basically take the input that our user has to control our character controllers and play the animations that we have on our characters, but it can be used for so much more. Let's say you want to take uh, your camera and maybe fly it through the scene on a set path. This can be done with uh, Mechanim. Maybe you have uh, boats in the background that are floating around on the water. Again, something very easily done with Mechanim. So let's go ahead and take a really small example, such as this one here, where we just have an elevator moving up and down. Now I've gone ahead and made some input keys here for the floor that I want to be on. One being well, the top floor and zero being the bottom floor. But you could go ahead and expand this, maybe put some sort of trigger on there so when your character walks in, then it goes up. Maybe you want to go ahead and put some in-game buttons or something on your on a wall that the player has to click. The possibilities are endless. Pick whatever one suits for your needs. But I want to keep it super simple because, well, this is just a demo. So let's go ahead and recreate this whole thing. So I'm going to start off my scene here. I have a directional light. Floor one is just the bottom floor. Floor two is the top floor. They're just cubes that are reshaped according to the scale. Uh, we have the elevator again, just another cube that's been rescaled. I've gone ahead and just thrown a cube on it and attached uh, a main camera as well, just so it follows it up and down. And I wanted to point out that a lot of times when you have a character control moving across something that has animation, it gets really jittery. Uh, sometimes you'll even fall through. Uh, if you're going to be doing this through a trigger or something like that, when you move onto it, before you start moving that game object, you will want to make it a child object of whatever it is that object's moving around. And then when they leave that object, go ahead and just unparent it. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually take a look to see how we did this. So I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to go ahead, get rid of the animator. You know what? Let's just go ahead. Uh, let's just get rid of everything. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead, grab the animator, or sorry, the object I want to animate in the scene, which in this case is the elevator. And I'm going to open up my animations tab. Now keep in mind, this is not the animator window, that's Mechanum. This is the animations tab, which you can get to through, I never remember these. Uh, looks like uh, Command 6 or Control 6. Anyway, with it selected, I'm going to go ahead and click this Create button here. And it's going to ask me where I want to save this new animation. I'm going to go ahead and not put it in the completed folder. That's the one we just looked at. I'll make new ones here. And I'm going to start off with uh, an idle animation. I almost always start off with an idle animation. And let's take a look here for a few things that happened. Uh, I went ahead and it made a controller for me. I went ahead and it made that idle animation. It assigned uh, the controller to the new animator component, which it added to the elevator element for me. And uh, that's it. It actually shows the clip count, so we know that we have at least one clip. And if we open up Mechanum, we see that it's actually loaded up here as well and automatically assigned the first animation that we're making idle as the default. So it does a ton of stuff in the background for you. I just wanted to point that out. I'm probably missing one or two things, which we'll, we'll discover as we go along. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to come down to the animation window. Uh, this clicked. Uh, earlier we've seen some red marks. Uh, that's because uh, we're in record mode. Uh, right now we're not because we don't have any properties select. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these things. What can we animate? Well, if we have something selected and we want to start animating, here are all the different things we can animate. If you open them up, there are the properties we can animate of each component. For this here, I just want it to move up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and animate the transform position. And when you do that, you've got two dots here, one at zero and one at one second. If we expand this, we see we actually can animate X, Y, or Z specifically by itself. I'm just going to be animating Y, but to be honest, I always click the, the one at the top, which selects all of them. But you could actually just go ahead and say, I only want to animate the one. But I'm going to do all of them. So let's go ahead and we'll select this first one. And this is going to animate over a whole second. Now, I already know, I believe it's 10 units. Floor two, yeah. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and have my elevator move up to the top here. And I'm just gonna keep it at one second. I could shrink the timeline in using the scroll wheel and move it to a time that would be more suitable for my animation. I'm just gonna keep it a second because it's just a demo. Of course, you could just drag it as well. And it does snap. So I'm gonna keep it at a second. And if we come up here, we notice the, the red marks the red boxes. These are the elements that I can animate. So if we look at the first one, 
at zero, zero, then negative 5.5. And that's because my elevator isn't dead center of the screen. It's off to the side a bit. And if we look at both marks, they're the exact same. So let's go ahead and we'll move it up 10 units on Y. And I'm going to unclick the record button here. Or deselect it, deselect it, whatever. Let's go ahead. We're going to hit this little play button beside the record. And we're going to watch it just play over and over again. It's set to loop. We'll set it after to not loop. And if we go ahead and go to the game view, uh, we'll work there because we got this here. But anyway. As you can see, the animation itself does work. Now, this is actually my idle animation. I just realized that. So we actually just did uh, the moving to the first floor. Idle animation, I don't want it to do anything. I just want one frame. That was all I wanted for idle. That's fine. We'll just get rid of the, the second frame, and we're good. So let's go ahead and make that up to the first floor animation. So we'll come here uh, where it says idle or whatever you named your clip. We're going to create a new clip. And this one we're going to call uh, two uh, floor one. And we're going to add a property and just like we went over earlier. And I select rotation by mistake. That's fine. I didn't actually want rotation. I'll just delete it. Uh, you can animate more than one component at the same time if you wish. But for this simple example, we're just going to do the one. All right. So. Frame one or zero, however you want to call it. I call it frame one. That's where I want to be one second later. I want to be up here and it handles it. Whoops. I want 10 on the Z. Silly me. <laughs> I want 10 on the Y. There we go. And of course, if we hit play again, all of a sudden record. Unrecord. You got some language skills. All right, there we go. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here is uh, down at the bottom, we have the dope sheet, which is what we're working on now, which is, you know, really dope. But we also have the curves down here. And we can see this line here that we're animating. The green line is the Y position. It corresponds also to the color of the axes up here. If we came down here, uh, let's right click, add a key right here. And let's make it a, a bit of a curve. So we want to go above one and a little below. And this can actually add the, you know, uh, an elevator when it, it goes up. If, obviously, I'm sure everyone's written an elevator. And you get that, it's like, mm -hmm. you can actually add this if you want. This way here, let's go ahead and play it now. And now when we watch it, uh, but if it doesn't repeat, but you see how it goes up and then bounces back down a bit, even on the bottom. That is one way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of mine. Come on. There we go. And we're just going to go with the up and down animation. Great. So let's go ahead and make one from floor one to floor zero as well while we're here. This will be really easy as we've done it before. So two, floor uh, zero. We'll add a property. We're going to go ahead and add that position again. Uh, this time around, we're going to be at 10. Oops, and because I did not have my little red marker at the right spot for frame zero, I went ahead and actually added a new frame there. Make sure you select that first frame. So I'm gonna say at 10 and one second in, I wanna be at zero. And of course, if we play this, there we go. So I'm gonna save that off. We come over here and we look in my folder here. We have the controller, we have the idle, the floor zero, and a floor one. And I'm just gonna quickly rename this just to keep the naming convention a little bit similar. Great. Let's select all three of them. I don't want any of them to loop. I guess technically it doesn't matter if idle loops. But the others I do not want to loop. Uh, the way I want this to work is I just wanna play it once and that's it. So I'll go ahead and save my scene off. Now it should be noted that I didn't actually have to create the, the back down animation. I could have just taken the first one and played it backwards, but I don't mind having a, a third animation here. All right, so we've got our done here. So let's go ahead and uh, connect this up. So I'm gonna go to floor one here, uh, floor zero here, we'll go idle there. And I guess first off, we're gonna make that parameter to uh, basically what floor we wanna move to. 
Now, I've already written the script. I'm not going to rewrite the script. We've already looked at mechanism scripts before. Uh, the way I like to set it up for these examples is the script is really just input. So let's go, we'll take a look here. So I'm going to go ahead, get my animator. We'll go ahead, we'll store it here. And then all I'm going to do is take a look to see when I'm pressing the zero key or the one key, and I'm going to move to that floor. And I just wanted to see what my parameter name was here, so I called it floor. So floor zero, floor one. Great, so it's an integer. And we can tell because it says set integer. So we'll go ahead, we're going to create an int, we're going to call it floor. And we'll make a transition to here, make a transition to there, make a transition back to here. And we'll go ahead, select the first transition, it has exit time, I'm going to turn it off, we're going to say, go ahead when the floor is greater. Did I make it int? Yeah, I did make it an int. Should be an equals, yes. When the floor equals one, we're going to move up. And let me just quickly check my notes or my script here. So yes, when we hit the one key, uh, floor is equal to one. When we hit zero, floor is equal to zero. So that's done. We'll go ahead. We'll click here. And we want to say when the floor is equal, oh, equal zero, we'll go back down to floor zero. And for the third one, we're just gonna leave it uh, the way it is. So let me just quickly check here, make sure nothing funky, okay. Uh, we shouldn't be in record mode, whoops. I didn't mean to hit that. All right, so we're out of record mode. I'm gonna come back into my scene, take the elevator. I am gonna need to add the elevator script, uh, which is actually in the completed folder. So I'm just gonna use the exact same script. Open this up. I'm going to go ahead and save my scene just in case bad things happen. We'll go ahead, we'll hit play. And I'm going to hit the one key. Nothing happens. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look to see what went wrong. And we'll go ahead and we'll check out the animation here. So um, this goes back down to floor zero. Let's go from floor one. So we're starting off at zero. We'll go up to, uh, we're not going up to 10. Hmm. For some reason, I didn't save it. All right, we'll turn off record now. Now we'll hit it, and my son just came home. Guess I did not get this done in time. All right, so that is saved. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, let's stop playing, let's stop recording, let's start testing. I'm gonna go ahead, we'll hit the one key. Arr, still not working. And hit the zero key, and there we go. So for some reason I had a root motion up, clicked on. We did not need it for this example. Uh, so there we go, we can now go up and down. And of course you can make more advanced versions of this. Maybe you have a camera, it flies through the scene. I'm just using a quick button to click uh, one to go up, zero to come back down, but you could easily have a trigger do this. Uh, really, there's no limit to it. You just, it's a great way just to be able to separate that input from the logic of your game. But anyway, my kid's about to run down here and get all wild on us. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I could be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.